Before I start the video, I want to thank my family, Serena, my friends. Without you guys, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So thank you all so much. And I also wanted to mention that any product or anything that I use in this video was not sponsored by, it wasn't sponsored by UWorld or Amboss or Ron King or anybody. It's just people that I actually used and resources that I found extremely helpful in preparing for step one. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so number one draft pick for studying for USMLE step one was Anki. You guys know how much I love Anki. I talk about Anki all the time on this channel. I make tutorials for pre-med students, for medical students on how to get started. And Anki was really the foundation and pillar for all the content that was in medical school and was gonna be on USMLE step one. The team over at Anki is killing it, so I cannot thank them enough for providing all these updates all the time and it truly is one of the best tools if not the best tool for me in medical school I know a lot of people don't like flashcards I didn't like flashcards before coming into medical school but the Anki program software really helped me retain so much information especially in medical school that's what it is a lot of the information isn't actually hard there's just so much information to keep it all in your head and then bring it back whenever you need it Anki is king on king you're the man or the team over at on king you guys are amazing so i ended up finishing the on king deck around one month before dedicated i finished on february 19th i'm gonna put a screenshot up here and that day felt amazing the deck was a little over thirty thousand plus cards and i just you know, that's one of the days that felt amazing. So I've done Anki for the last two years. I have missed a few days here and there, but overall, I think probably I missed maybe three or four days over two years, guys. Th that is the power of Anki. You have to be consistent. You have to do it every single day. It is a daily grind, yes, but I feel like it really paid off when I started Dedicated. So when I started Dedicated, I felt like I wasn't spending that much time on content review or knowledge. It was more like, yes, there was some factoids that I was missing that was but it kind of felt like a lot of the question that I wasn't missing was not because I had a content or knowledge gap, it was more because I had a test taking gap, which I will talk about in one of my later points. Before starting my dedicated period, which was March 17th, I think that's a Monday, so I started my dedicated that day. So before this, so during my blocks in medical school, I also had USMLE RX360, you know, for every week we had a quiz in class, so in RX360 I was doing those questions every single week. I was finishing, I was trying to finish every block by the time the block was over. I didn't actually end up finishing RX360. I did around 1500 questions on RX360 and there's 2200. So I looked up early and I didn't do around 700, but I did around 1500 throughout to medical school with my blocks on RX360 and then a little bit during dedicated I'll get to that in a little bit and then I did do UWorld every single block so if I had the cardio poem renal block I did I finished UWorld questions for that block before my NBME to pass the course so I did finish around 80% of UWorld before I started to get dedicated just by doing this um so UWorld is about 3,200 questions, so I, did, I finished around 80% of it at that time. All right, we are gonna be resetting our UWorld. I'm going hard, I've done 66% of all questions, or 80% of all questions, I guess. Oof. And we are here, zero. Whew. All right, well, here we go. Uh, I finished Amboss in three weeks. It was about 2,800, so there's actually like 600 more questions on this, so I have a lot of work cut out for me. Uh, let's grind. And that's kind of like pre-dedicated what I did to get started on, in Dedicated. How did I start Dedicated? So I had kind of, I've, I would watched a bunch of videos by Prerac, he's an amazing student at Yale. I think he's graduating soon. So I watched a lot of his videos and I watched a lot of the On King's videos. And I had kind of made a conscious decision a long time ago that I was gonna start my dedicated with Amboss. So I do have um, full access to Amboss and I was using 
Amboss with Anki, guys. So this was another recipe to my success. So Amboss has an amazing add-on that if you hover over one of their underlying words, it gives you a quick summary of that. Like if it's a disease, it'll give you a quick summary. And this was vital to keeping a lot of the stuff fresh, a lot of the physiology, pathology, mechanism of action of drugs. Like it was just there, boom. If I did a quick review, and then if I needed to go deeper, then I could just click on an article and then it would take me into a page showing me all about that. So the Amboss add-on was insane for med school along with, I also did, so the add-ons that I recommend for Anki, like if there was two add-ons, it would be the Amboss add-on and Glutanimate's review heat map add-on. I had a lot of other add-ons, but every time it would update, a lot of add-ons would break, and I just found that these two add-ons were just like the number two that I could not live without. So if there's two add-ons that you guys want to get, Amboss and review heat map, done. You guys can add on add-ons here. There's some really fun like Pokemon ones and stuff that some of my friends had. I never really got into them, I, but those are the two I would highly recommend. So March 17th, what happened? Dedicated start, boom, I started with Amboss, guys. So like I said, I made a conscious decision that I was gonna finish Amboss before doing anything else. So I started doing around 100 to, um, questions a day on March 17th. I had like a review thing going on with med school at the same time. So that first week I was doing 100 questions a day and I was, I used their study planner and I was going kind of quickly through this guys. So I was mostly just wanting to get to the QBank because I've heard that, I know there's a study, maybe I'll put it up if I can find it, if not, that the more unique practice questions you do, the better you do on step. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna finish Amboss. So I started doing 100 questions a day and reviewing it. I did it all in tutor mode. So I did all of Amboss in tutor mode. Um, so I'll do the question and review it instantly, move on. Do a question, review it, move on. I did that for the first week and then Whenever that first week was over and I didn't have any med school obligations, I upped it up to around 160 to 200 Amboss questions a day. Um, and I ended up finishing the Amboss question bank. I think it was around 2,800 practice questions in around two and a half weeks. Uh, I kind of had budgeted um, like three weeks, but I had talked to one of my learning specialists, our learning specialist here at my school, and he's like, you should spend more time on your world, which is like the gold standard than on something else. I was like, all right, we're gonna power through Amboss. So I powered through Amboss, guys, and it was really amazing. You know, a lot of the content, uh, a lot of the content I felt really confident on, and towards the end when I started upping it, my average did start going down a lot, but, Nonetheless, I finished the Amboss QBank in around two and a half weeks. I scattered in a, one NBME, I think it was form 18 before the new system changed. And then I was gonna take another one the following week, but because the new forms were coming out, I decided not to, so I decided to take UWorld Self-Assessment 1 that following week before the new forms came out. And then I was done with Amboss, so boom, done with Amboss. Uh, I had taken Form 1 and UWorld Self-Assessment 1. Uh, on the first, on Form 18, I believe I got a 205. So that was actually a pretty good way to start dedicated. So I actually started dedicated with that 205. So the 17th, I started with that 205 NBME, which was good, you know? Uh, kind of low from like target scores or anything, but I thought it was a really good start. That was already passing. So that was uh, that was good. Then I started doing the Amboss, and then a week, I think, about a week and a half later, I took UWorld Self-Assessment 1. And I got a 245 on UWorld Self-Assessment 1, and I know that is super overinflated, so it felt really good to get a 245, but I knew that that was just like super inflated, especially for two weeks of studying. And then, so the following week I started, so after I finished Amboss, I started with U world. So I started doing a lot of U world guys. So I started with around 160 to 200. That was my goal of questions to do every day. It was either four blocks of 40 or five blocks of 40. And yes, I know it sounds like a lot, but I only had around six weeks of dedicated, which then got extended a little bit because of some testing ish, some testing cancellation issues. 
Um, not on my part, I didn't extend or anything, but just I got canceled a few times just because of COVID and different issues, which it's kind of annoying and stressful, but uh, nonetheless, things like this happen and you gotta adapt. So I started doing UWorld and taking an NBME every single week. So my first form, form 25, I ended up getting a 215. And then the second one, I got another 215. Uh, so that was 26. On um, 27, I got a 222. 28 destroyed me, guys. So on NBME 28, I dropped back down to like a 196, which was, holy cow, that was so stressful. Um, I, that was just terrible. That was probably like three weeks out from actual exam day. Uh, some people said 28 was a score dropper, and I was like, no, like, that's just not a thing, you know. And yeah, it dropped my score to 196, so that was freaking terrifying. Um, so I contacted one of my friends. He is a tutor for a step one prep company, um, and we kind of got together, you know, we talked. We got together one night, and... We kind of figured that, you know, it wasn't really knowledge that I was lacking. It was more test taking abilities, which I mean, I, I always knew I wasn't the best standardized take, test taker, but this really opened my eyes. So I talked to him um, and, you know, I kind of got some confidence again. I scored on 29. I ended up going back up to 218. Oh, no, I didn't get I didn't talk to my tutor until the next one. So I got a 218 on form 29 then that's when I talked to the tutor and I kind of realized like okay it's not a content issue it's a test taking issue so when I ended up taking form 30 the last NBME two days later guys he tutored me for a night and then I worked on it the following day and on form 30 I ended up getting a 231 which that's average so I was like okay I don't suck at knowledge or gap I don't know. I was like, okay, so it's not really the knowledge that's getting me, it's the test taking skills. What is this test question right here in front of me asking me? That was something that I started asking for every single question in front of me, guys. And two days later when I took Form 30, I got a 231. And that just made me realize like, okay, it's not the knowledge. You just need to work on your test taking skills. This was one week before. This was about a week out from test date. So I was like, all right, so what am I gonna do from here to then is just work on test taking skills. You have the knowledge, you just have to answer the question that's being asked, Aaron. Yeah, so I took form 30 on Monday. So that was one week before my actual step test day on May 3rd. And then I took UWorld Self-Assessment 2 on the Thursday. So on that Thursday, I got a 232 on UWorld Self-Assessment 2, again, you know, like, analyzing what I got wrong it's I know the content I just mess up answering the question and it's really frustrating uh, and but it's something like I can work on I can specifically just work on that there's a police officer I don't know if you guys can hear him I really wish I had known a lot of these test taking skills before taking step one or even starting dedicated I think my scores would have been a lot higher but nonetheless, I had reached a 232 on your world step two, and I was like, we're going for it on Monday. Um, you know, 232 is average or something around there. So I was like, it's okay to be average, especially on one of the hardest tests in the world. So I took the free 120 on the following Friday. I'm gonna take them the same day, but I was feeling kind of under the clouds. So I took 120, gives you a percentage of how many you get wrong, just like, extra you know you want to do everything you can guys and then on monday may 3rd i took step one so let's rewind a little bit so how did i do content review and other my like my flashcards how was i fitting that in so i would actually i'm going to talk a little bit about my scheduling guys so i know a lot of people have these super intense structured schedules and it's just not who i am i hate having super structured schedules like that for school I know myself and I'm actually pretty disciplined on getting my goals done for the day. So I would get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and if I was ready to start doing a block of UWorld, I would get my coffee and do a block. If I felt like I needed a little bit more time to wake up a little bit, I would take a shower, I would make a good breakfast, and then I would start my day. Uh, I didn't really struggle with 
like getting my goals done. There were a few days here and there that, yeah, like it was tough to get it done, but there was not one day where I didn't finish my goals for the day. I was, for Anki, I stopped doing the entire deck that I was doing. Um, it started adding up too much because I started compressing a lot of the cards to show up during this dedicated period of time from a while ago. I started rescheduling them. So what I would do is I would go one deck at a time instead of doing the full deck. I would do like either cardio or poem or renal. I would always finish my pharmacology cards every single day. And the reason I did this is because I felt that it would be silly to miss a question from farm just because I was strong in farm and you know just to keep up to date and those cards would go really fast because I was strong and I just always felt that it would be silly to get a farm question wrong for me personally so I would always finish farm and then I would do one or two decks a day I wouldn't finish the whole thing every single day and then for a content review I didn't do as much specific content review there was a couple instances so I did some really focused biostats content review Neil at biostats on youtube was amazing and then i did dirty medicine ethics and biochem those were like the most focused ones i did because those were my weak areas on amboss it really showed me that i was weak in biostats early on in epidemiology and biochem and then when i started UWorld, world it was apparent i was weak in that so i did some really structured content review on that for biostats i watched the Neil med biostats videos one and two and then I did all the UWorld questions, just straight biostats, and then the RX360 questions, straight biostats, just to really freaking drive that into my head. It was a crappy day. I hated that day, but it, you, had, you have to do it. You have to work on your weak areas. So I ended up doing that. And then for biochem, I did the same thing, basically, just drilling into your head, freaking uh, biochem. So what I found really helpful for biochem is knowing the enzymes, what pathways they are, and then when a question for biochem would come up, what pathway is this asking me about? Because sometimes they would have um, enzymes from different pathways, so if you knew that they're asking about a certain pathway, and there's only one enzyme in that pathway in the answer choices, boom, move on. Um, that's kind of how I approach the biochem because it is one of my weak spots. Uh, I still feel weak in it, but I think that really helped me out. And... Then I did some boards and beyond for, I did a couple cardio ones, some general farm principles, but nothing crazy. I don't learn very well watching videos and taking notes. I know myself and I know that practice questions are how I perform best and learn best. So that's what I focused on. And that's how you guys should structure your studying. Focus on how you guys learn best and the things you guys can do better at. All right, breaks, taking breaks, guys. This one was hard. So I told you guys that I, uh, I would finish my goals every single day, but that's why I gave myself like a kind of a buffer of 160 to 200 you world questions a day If I was feeling crappier that day, I would only do 160 Because there's like that vicious cycle of being frustrated and doing worse and worse So on those days I would do less and take a break, you know, take the afternoon off uh, I would make a good meal with Serena in the afternoons and just chill, you know, watch some YouTube and just uh, decompress go exercise anything on those bad days uh, breaks are extremely important. I did um, have a few, I mean, honestly, I did have a few days of just those terrible, awful days of step studying that everybody experiences, but they were kind of um, fewer than I expected. So I'm really grateful for that. And But yeah, take breaks, guys. Don't absolutely kill yourselves. I know I probably look like I have some really baggy eyes and it's just how I look all the time, I'm sorry. I don't think it's from step studying ridiculous hours, but it might be. Okay, actually let me rewind a little bit and talk about the content review for the NVMe. So I was doing the 40 questions uh, timed, so those would take about an hour, and then content review would should take between two, should take another one to two hours. So for every block, it was 30, it was three hours. So one hour taking it, another two hours Max reviewing it and doing some content review. Uh, so that was around, I was doing around nine to 12 hours of question and content review alone every single day, plus on top of Anki, plus doing some content review every now and then, which was less, like the videos and stuff, that was a lot less. And then the focus days that on Biostats and Biochem, those were like the kind of just kind of weird off days that I would have. But yeah, taking breaks is extremely important. 
Let's talk a little bit about food and exercising, guys. So a lot of upperclassmen have told us whenever we have like these sessions on step one tips and stuff that they ate like absolute crap during step one. And I decided when I heard that, I was like, no, we are gonna eat good. We're gonna nourish our bodies. We are not gonna <laughs> further uh, destroy our bodies with crappy food. So uh, I went to Sam's before we started and we would, and I got um, a few things uh, that I like to eat. So number one was oatmeal. I got a freaking huge thing of oatmeal. So every morning I would either eat oatmeal and some bacon pieces, you know, along with my coffee or for breakfast, I would actually make like eggs and bacon or whatever with beans and tortillas and eat, eat hearty, eat a good breakfast because I didn't want to eat like crap. For lunch, I would have something else, you know, I would have like either a sandwich, I would have, you know, I did have some frozen, some freezer meals that you guys saw in that last vlog, but they were nourishing. They weren't just crap junk food. They were like pasta and chicken kind of stuff. So to really like get those carbs and stuff. And then in the afternoon, like I said, I would usually make food here with Serena. So that was really nice. It was kind of like a good way to detach myself from the studying, spend some time with her and eat a good meal. Uh, and then if there was leftovers, I would eat that for lunch the next day. So it was, I, I felt like I really nourished myself well and I feel like that really helped me. Um, yeah, I think I did really good on that front because I am notorious for eating ramen and eating like crap and going and getting McDonald's. But for step one, I really feel proud of myself on the eating front because I did really well. And then the exercising, well, I could have done more. Obviously, you could always do more. But we got a gym membership and we'd go every now and then. Uh, the last week of step studying, I actually started exercising a lot more, uh, which was really good for my body and just like mental health overall leading up into my test, helping with the anxiety. Uh, so if it's something that you guys are interested in or it's something I highly encourage you guys to do, you know, move a little bit. You know, it felt like 12 hours a day on the computer. It felt like I was literally gonna get some DVTs you know, some PEs, some, I didn't want to stroke out or anything, so. So another point, I studied with friends here and there with a few of my med school friends. I studied with my cousin. Um, just, you know, a few nights here and there, we would get together and do some practice questions together. We would put all five heads into a question and it would, it would, it would work out really well. Um, it felt, uh, I'm sorry guys, if you guys see this video, but it felt kind of inefficient. Uh, just because it does take a lot of time, but on the other front, you know, that social aspect of socializing, not being so secluded was really good for the brain. So uh, other than that, I really enjoyed my time with my friends, studying with them. Uh, it did feel inefficient at times, but also it was good for that social aspect of it. Tutoring. So I told you guys I got some tutoring from one of my good friends. Uh, he tutors for a step one prep company. And he's the one that really helped me work on my test taking skills. And I can't thank him enough for meeting with me. You know, he didn't charge me or anything. I, after I told him, I was like, yo, I'm not at my goal score yet. Called me instantly, said, let's set up some appointments. Met with me three times the week before, like two weeks in one and a half weeks before my test. And gave me some really good tips and pointers and helped me out some more. So thank you so much, bro. Uh, I just can't thank you enough for that. So yeah, that is basically how I studied for step one, guys. Another really important point I wanted to make was setting boundaries with your family and friends. This is really difficult uh, for everybody. Um, and you know, being first gen, uh, I don't know, it can't, I don't know, I don't think it's more difficult, but um, it might happen more often that your family and friends don't understand that you really need to crunch time and you know for the most part the family is incredibly supportive so whenever I told him I was like I can't be like just showing up and you can't just call me um, and you know <laughs> it, it can seem really selfish but you it's just six weeks guys or however long you're dedicated it is be a little bit selfish I'm sorry you know I want to I feel bad I want to cry a little bit but that's just the reality of med school you need to freaking put your heart and soul into every single day um, and then if those boundaries do start getting crossed a little bit more than you want then put your phone on do not disturb put it in airplane uh, 
if they really do need you, they will get a hold of you. They know where you live or whatever. Um, you know, that's how I like the do not disturb because if they actually do need you, they'll call you multiple, multiple times and then the call will go through. So something to think about, I know it's difficult. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but you have to have these boundaries. And I hope you guys liked this video. I know there was a lot going on. Um, uh, there was a few things that I did miss, you know, here at the end. I just remember, so obviously I did use Pathoma. So the day before my test, actually before I end, the day before my test, what did I do? So a lot of people said to do Pathoma chapters one through three. So I opened up the video and the book and I was like, this is gonna take too long. So what I did is I went and uh, into my Anki and I deactivated the whole deck. I activated just chapters one, two, and three from Pathoma, boom. It was 750 cards, I think. And I just destroyed them in like an hour and a half. And I was flying through them, guys. And there was actually a couple questions on my actual step one that directly related to Pathoma, one, two, three. So I highly recommend you guys do it. And the morning of my test, what I do, I got up at five. My test didn't start at eight. I watched Neil med biostats videos again <laughs> that video because i felt super weak and then i made a breakfast ate some oatmeal some bacon went for my test snacks in between my tests so test day felt really good actually so i ate that breakfast oatmeal and some bacon before i showed up a little bit early i started one of my classmates had showed up even earlier so he was almost done with one block by the time I got started. So that was awesome. If you guys can show up early to your test, and if you guys want to start early, if you want to start at eight, that's fine. I started around 7.30. My first break, I had one of those protein packs, you know, it has like cheese and um, it had cheese, peanuts and chicken. So that was a really good snack. I finished the whole thing. You know, it's weird. I guess just the stress of that first one uh, kind of, I just got to me so I got hungry. You know, after every section, I would take a break. I would take a chug of coffee. I would take my snack and my water and I, you were actually able to like walk around. So I went outside, I would walk around, you know, a little bit, five-ish minutes, use the restroom, get back in, do another 40, full focus, take a break. I repeated that over and over until I was done. Uh, it felt really good. Uh, now, you know, just the anxiety that comes with waiting for your test results, but other than that, that's basically how I studied for USMLE Step 1, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. This video was probably really long, but if you guys stuck with me, thank you all for your support. Can't thank my family enough, my friends, Serena, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave a like, leave a comment, what you thought, other tips for other students if you're currently studying, you know, good luck.